Hill for they need. Thank the member for Shortland. The question is a motion be agreed to, and I call the member for Ford. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and uh, I'd like to thank uh, my good friend, the member for Hasluck, uh, for putting this motion forward. And I'd like to make a few notes, uh, take a few notes out of out of the motion, just to set the scene for where we are with diabetes in Australia. Diabetes is a serious health concern with an estimated 382 million people worldwide living with the disease. It also recognises that some 8 per cent of Australians are currently living with diabetes, and by 2035 some 14 per cent of Australians will be living with diabetes. And worst of all, Mr Deputy Speaker, incidences of diabetes are three to four times higher in Indigenous communities than they are in the broader population. The motion goes on to call on the government, individuals, families, communities and healthcare services and industry to take urgent action to ensure the prevention of diabetes, improve early diagnosis of diabetes and support ongoing research into treatment and medications for diabetes and finally to effectively manage and treat diabetes. Mr oh, Deputy Speaker, I, I think it's worthwhile noting that the government has committed to developing a new national diabetes strategy to inform how existing resources can be better coordinated and targeted across all levels of government and to prioritise the national response and existing resources through an emphasis on prevention, early diagnosis and intervention, management and treatment, including the role of primary care. I think, as we all know, Mr Deputy Speaker, there are two main two types of diabetes, type 1 diabetes and type 2. Type 1 diabetes requires a different approach. One of the misconceptions of type 1 diabetes is that it is lifestyle related, but this is not the case. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease and the pancreas stops making insulin needed to break down the sugar from food into energy and the consequences of this can be deadly. There is ongoing research into finding a, type, a cure for type 1 diabetes, with the federal government recently uh, making an election commitment of $35 million as a contribution into the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation's clinical research network. In relation to type 2 diabetes, Mr Deputy Speaker, there are some 10,500 individuals in the electorate of Ford who live with type 2 diabetes. And according to Diabetes Queensland, your risk for type 2 diabetes is higher if you have a family history of type 2 diabetes, developed diabetes during pregnancy, are more than 40 years of age, are of Aboriginal or Torres, Torres Strait Islander descent, don't get enough exercise, have high blood pressure, are overweight, uh, have a measured waist of a more than 94 centimetres for men and 80 centimetres for women, and have poor diet containing too much fatty or sugary food. Well, I think it's uh, obvious, Mr Deputy Speaker, that then in order to reduce your risk of type 2 diabetes, some of the things that can be done to reduce the amount of fat and sugar in our diets, eating healthy foods, including fresh fruit and vegetables, losing weight, exercising for more than 30 minutes a day, and reducing your alcohol intake. And Mr Deputy Speaker, I must import, in stress the importance of preventative health. And I think with a lot of health measures, we focus on dealing with the symptoms rather than dealing with how we prevent it in the first place. In a speech by the Minister for Health addressing the CEDA conference last week, it was noted that the number of overweight and obese adults has risen by 63 per cent on the latest 2011-12 figures. And it's not just adult waistlines that are increasing, but sadly one quarter of children aged 2 to 17 years are overweight or obese. And in 2012 there were some 2,200 youngsters diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. We as a society cannot afford to ignore these statistics, and more has to be done to prevent lifestyle-related diseases such as obesity and type 2 diabetes. Viktor Frankl, in his book Man's Search for Meaning, stated, when we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. Preventative measures will not only improve the individual's quality of life, and it should also reduce the strain on our health resources. 
In conclusion, I support the member for Hazlock's motion and thank him for bringing attention of this important issue to the House.